I'm going to slide that out in the middle there so it's pointing kind of over this yeah. way. Can you help me move over there? Just keep the, somewhere down the seats there. And if you can see the screen, it's uh, on you tell, you tell me where Keep going. Keep going. I want to see the whole thing. Great. I can't see right? What's that? I don't see what you're seeing. No, you'll see. Is the screen still in the back? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I see what you're seeing. Um, I think that's probably pretty good. What do you enough. think? It's already recording. I, I can see both. All right, that's good. I was, I had it at Step stool, boarding stool, and uh, have them yell all aboard. It's a great photo opportunity. Everybody loves it. They clap and everything else. And uh, if I've got anything to give them as a souvenir, I get, I'll, I'll give that to them as well. So if I've got uh, coins that are over, pennies that are over by the train, or I've got railroad pins or whatever. But uh, they enjoy it. But all aboard is actually the signal that everyone is aboard and we're ready to leave. Here comes your mic. One, two, three, four. All right. Can you hear me? I'm going to do a little um, quick little thing. Sure. When you are thinking you can take the map yep. off or on, your choice. I'll, I'll take it off. I'm going to take it. I'm showing at 12 o'clock noon, and any good railroad is going to be on time. So we'll get started right at noon. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone out to History at Noon. If you were here two hours ago and later, we did our first passing over history. Uh, but today is our first history at noon. How many people in here was not aware that 2022 was the 150th sesquicentennial, the anniversary of Clayton Village? All right. That is why this program is going on today. If it wasn't for the 150th celebration, there would be no history at noon until like July. But um, uh, several of us on the Sesquicentennial Planning Committee got talking about lectures and programs, and the decision was made, let's do history at noon, not just the summertime, let's do it all year long. So you get 12 programs. Normally in a good year, you might get five. Really good year, you're gonna get six. But this year, you're gonna get 12. 
All right. So we appreciate you coming out to all 12. Uh, but, but first, uh, what's that? Is being called the Dirty Dozen. I read. Well, he's one of the Dirty Dozens. That's right. I, the Hashtower history, there's 12 speakers. History of Newland, there's 12 speakers. And uh, yeah, I put in one of the newspapers, you from this day out is known as one of the dirty dozen. Yeah. But anyways, I'm Tom LeClaire. I am the uh, Clayton Town slash Village Historian. Again, welcome to History at Noon. This program is a partnership uh, with the Thousand Island Museum. Myself is the Historian's Office. We got the Sesquicentennial Planning Committee, and we also got the Clayton Opera House. So we're all working hand in hand to bring these programs to you. Uh, so Larry, as you can see the way he's dressed, he, he knows a little bit about trains. And when you get done today, you're going to know a little bit more about trains. So with that, Larry, the program is yours. All right, thank you. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming out. How are we talking about Clayton by train? a little history of how the trains got to Clayton. Uh, not a lot about trains in Clayton itself, but there's not a lot of resources out there for that. Uh, Tom and I sat at the museum last week, uh, pouring through the various books. I uh, probably could have twice as many pictures if I chose to do that, but I do not. So we're gonna talk about uh, some of the, you know, as I say, how the trains got here in the first place, and uh, a little bit about what went on after that. So, leading off. Uh, now, a lot of what you're going to see today came out of a book called The History of the Rome Water Town of Ogdensburg. Edward Hungerford, it published in 1922. It's available online. Just look that up online. And it's a Gutenberg Project uh, presentation. You can read the whole thing. It's quite a few pages. Not, not that many if you print it out, but uh, the pages were smaller in the book, apparently. But nonetheless, it's an excellent resource, although I found some issues with it. Uh, I tried to credit images wherever possible. A good number of them came from the Thousand Isles Museum through some other folks. There's some from my personal collection. And a few that I forgot to get the attributes for when uh, I pulled them offline. But uh, many, most of them are easily available. They're postcards or whatever. Uh, you can buy them. Come down to the train show at Clayton. There's a postcard dealer. Odds are they'll have that postcard. And uh, some other information, uh, Nancy Bond and Rick Caselli both wrote articles for the uh, Thousand Islands uh, Life magazine, and those were both resources that gave me some information for this as well, so uh, credit for them. Now, railroading is fun. It's dangerous, definitely dangerous uh, if you're involved with it, as I am when I'm the conductor, uh, or when I'm the, uh, you know, there's a, uh, and I didn't meet a lot of people, by the way. Uh, that was taken at the uh, show in Springfield, but I didn't miss this year because of this. Uh, that building, that show, there's four buildings. Uh, has anyone ever been to the Eastern State Exposition in uh, Massachusetts, in West Springfield? It's basically the New England State Fair. So picture four buildings at the New York State Fair, including the, the new one, all full of railroads, model railroads, real railroads things like hats, whatever. You name it, park is there. So that was taken there. And they're gonna have the seat of the first RS3 locomotive that the New York Central had, which we believe probably ran up into, I know it ran up into this area uh, as well. Uh, we no longer, we were releasing at the time. There's some, the owner has died, there's some issues with the, uh, he's after who owns it and stuff like that. So we aren't running that anymore. We had 8255 instead, also an RS3. But yes, I get to ring the bell, I get to blow the horn, I can pull the throttle and, and, and use the brakes and uh, hopefully give everybody a good ride when we're out there. And yes, that is Thomas the Tank Engine. So you can sell all your little ones that you met the driver for uh, Thomas the Tank Engine. Uh, we ran uh, 48 trips uh, over two weekends that year and I was at the throttle in Thomas every time. Now that Thomas is just basically a car. Don't even have a brake in it. But I spent a lot of time in those that radio on. I was talking to the engineer and talking about what we could do. And we are on our way to Tupper Lake, finally. We are going all the way to Lake Placid. The trail advocates have successfully gotten Tupper Lake to Lake Placid ripped up. It's gone. But we will be running to uh, Tupper Lake uh, this summer. Not sure exactly when yet. We still have some work to do. My railroad history, I grew up in Southeast. I was born in Watertown. I grew up in Southeastern Michigan. 
Uh, right by the uh, former Pier Marquette, uh, Father Marquette, one of the explorers who uh, explored out in, the, in that area. And the Pier Marquette Railroad ran from, uh, well, I'm not sure what it ran through all over Michigan. And actually, Pier Marquette owned some of the car ferries that ran across Lake Michigan. I used to uh, go to work, go to school in the morning when I was in junior high school, and three trains would come through in the 20 minutes or so it took me to walk to school. And by the way, it was uphill both ways. <laughs> Rain, snow, sleet, hail. Our junior high school was on top of one hill in the village. Straddles, if you saw those slides I was showing earlier, straddles to here in the river. And we lived on top of the other hill, so it was uphill both ways. <laughs> All right. Uh, I threw in a picture of uh, Pier Market 1225 there. And you may not have ever heard of 1225. Probably haven't seen it, I have. Um, Unfortunately, it wasn't under steam when I was out in Michigan for an event there, but uh, it was uh, actually preserved on the campus of Michigan State University. Uh, a group of students got together, got it back under steam, and the Steam Railroading Institute now runs it. Uh, they just finished up their Christmas trains with it. Uh, the significant thing about 1225 is, while well, you may not have heard of it, how many have seen the movie Polar Express? Okay. You've heard, you've heard the logo? The uh, producers went to Owasso, Michigan and recorded sounds from the locomotive that were used in the movie. Now, one thing they realized they hadn't done when they got there, or when they got home back in, in Hollywood, was they weren't quite sure exactly how to change the headlight. So the folks at SRA, SRI videoed changing the headlight on the 1225. It's just a big screw base. But so when you see the scene in, in Polar Express where they're changing the headlight, technically it's correct. You won't find them out there at 60 miles an hour changing the headlight, <laughs> but technically changing the headlight on that locomotive is correct. Uh, Milford has a, like a lot of towns, has a history book, and uh, the history, the history, the title of the history book is 10 minutes ahead of the rest of the world. And that came from a little stunt that some youths had played. They got from the clock in the railroad station and moved ahead 10 minutes. The chaos ensued for several days. People wondering why trains were early, late, why they weren't where they're supposed to be until they finally figured out that indeed the clock had been changed. They fixed that. But then I say, I digress. Uh, I am a rail fan. Most people are at some level, unless you're stuck. In Behind the charter, stuck at a crossing with a long train. Uh, starts with a tree. Uh, I, didn't, I could have gotten a picture for that, but I didn't. A train under the tree. Uh, Thomas for kids of uh, the current generation. Uh, we're always glad to see the gates go down. It's like, what's going to go by? What's going to go by? And uh, any sort of rail activity. Uh, there are a number of <coughs> rail cams all over the country, including one in Pulaski, uh, the crossing of Pulaski Route 13. Uh, there's one up in uh, Deschler, Ohio, that I actually go to Deschler almost every year. And we watch trains go by. Sit on our computers, watch trains go by. And uh, there are some very avid followers. They actually keep a log of all the trains going through Deschler. There's one at Fairport as well in New York. We often model. I model the Tongue Hill in Northern, which is loosely based on the Rome Water Town of Ogdensburg, but not. And uh, also includes a little bit of the, the, the yeah, Glenfield and Western. And the railroad archaeology is fairly fascinating. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. So, Orange is a rail in the North Country. Well, the water town in Rome, the first railroad up here, the Rome water town in Augsburg, which grew from the water town in Rome. Ellsberg and Sackis Harbor. How many knew there was a railroad that ran between Pierpoint Manor and Sackis Harbor? As a matter of fact, the station at Sackis Harbor uh, was built for that railroad and used later on for another railroad. The uh, Carthage Watertown and Sackets Harbor. Now that was the one, that's who they used, who used the station. And if you travel on uh, Route 81, just south of exit 45, there's a big billboard on the east side of 81. And that billboard is on the right of way of the uh, Carthage Watertown and Sackets Harbor, which ran from the Watertown Seconds Harbor and, and over to Carthage as well, obviously. 
the Carthage, Carthage and Copenhagen. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And there are a lot of other ones. There was a rail here in Clayton, the Clayton and Theresa, which I didn't know existed until I started researching, get some depth for this. The Utica Black River, the Rome Water Town of Ogdenburg, and of course in New York Central. Mid 1800s, there were a lot of railroads built. A lot. Most of them were local efforts. Uh, the Great New York Central Water Level Route was oh, three or four or five. Uh, I got to look up for this, but uh, short railroads: the Schenectady and Utica, the Utica and Syracuse, and right on down the line. And, uh, they were all gathered together into one railroad, and there they went uh, and grew from there. Uh, I mentioned the. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to the uh, Clayton Three, so there a minute. Uh, the same thing. And they were also often locally funded by subscriptions. Uh, you want to see the railroad in your town? Sure, throw in a couple hundred bucks or whatever, buy a share of the railroad, and uh, we can get it built, and away we go. Stock certificate for the uh, World Water Town of Some of the other railroads, the Sackets Harbor and Ellsberg, I mentioned, uh, ran from Kirkwood Manor up through Warhol Settlement, Belleville, Smithville, and on to Sackets Harbor. And you still find a lot of that right away. We'll talk about that a little bit in archaeology here. The Carthage Water Town of Sackets Harbor, which ran clearly from uh, Carthage through Black River, along that line. That, that A lot of that uh, railroad has uh, been obliterated. obliterated. It used to be a big hill just uh, east of Black River on um, Route 3, and they took that out, but that was for the overpass for that railroad. And I think my next line is actually incorrect. I don't think they actually planned to extend that one. That was another railroad, but we'll talk about that one as well. The Carthage Copenhagen was clearly a railroad that was built by the locals for the locals. Didn't last very long, but their station in Copenhagen lasted quite a while. The town took it over, and I think they actually moved it and used it as a town barn. One thing that they used on that railroad, though, was a, a unique piece of uh, rolling stock called the McKean Wind Splitter. And yes, it's a unique. I, mean, I think there's some, probably some marine influence there with the, with the, the pointed prow and the rear end was round, very much like ships. So there are not a lot of the 